Welcome back. So we've had this heat wave here in Vancouver for like the past week and a bit and it finally broke today and I feel so good. I can finally film again without just like dripping with sweat. Not that I tried to film, I just knew that that would happen. Vancouver is a little bit weird because whenever it's really hot, everything shuts down. Whenever it's really cold and it snows, everything shuts down. Whenever it rains, everyone cries, so no one's ever really happy here, but I actually really, really like the cold. I like the rain. I enjoy all that. That's very typical of Vancouver. I feel like I was born to live in the Pacific Northwest, but the heat, if it goes above 30 degrees, I, I can't. I just, I, I lose the will to function, so I'm so happy that it's finally broke, and I think we're going to get some rain tonight, so... I'm just I'm just very happy. So as the title of the video would suggest, I have yet another show and tell video for you guys today. I wasn't planning on it to be honest, but I just happened to get four wishlist plants on the span of a week and I could not do a video on it because I'm just so excited about it. And plus, plus I feel like I've gotten into a little bit of a groove with my filming schedule in conjunction with like my ridiculous work schedule. I'm still able to film, edit and upload without staying up all night I'm still able to sleep and even yesterday I spent the entire day like deep cleaning the house so I'm feeling like I can breathe again so that said I have to kind of do somewhat easier videos I expect things to kind of start calming down near to the end of this month and then I'll start being able to do a little bit more fun videos a little bit more like labor intensive videos a little bit more i don't know like my growth experience kind of videos repotting things like that but for now there's a lot of like show and tell stuff i hope you guys don't mind but anyway last week was my birthday i turned 35 and i got a couple of wishlist plants from my friends so charmaine jing and aaron oh dang i actually have five plants one two three four five Okay, I have five plants. I don't know if I said four earlier, but I have five, five plants. I got two wishlist plants from Charmaine, Jean, and Aaron. I got one plant for my boyfriend, and then a couple of plants I picked up at the Equigenera pop-up show. So they had another one here. And this time, Equigenera Florida sent up plants as well. So there was like a bit of a different kind of selection than normally would be there. So I had actually totally forgotten that Florida was sending up plants. So when I got there, there was like some goodies there that I wasn't expecting to see. So that was really fun. So I got a couple plants there. So all in all, I have five plants to show. And I still can't believe some of them are in my collection right now. Um, but yeah, I am excited to show you I feel like five plants is going to be a kind of a short video and whenever I do like a 30 minute video I feel kind of like a slacker so I'm going to throw in two growth updates in here that weren't kind of ready when I did my last growth updates video with the aeroids. They don't really go with the video I just really wanted to capture them in this state right now because they're a, I have just this short window of time to capture them just the way they look and I really wanted to show you guys that so just going to be two random growth updates at the end five plants at the beginning let's get started so this first one i talked about in like my wishlist video if one of my wishlist philodendrons since then i've gotten two specimens of this plant and i have killed them both i'm still very upset about it but jing chopped up her personal plant and gave me the bottom cutting for my birthday jing has a really really beautiful specimen and i was not expecting her to do this but for my birthday she chopped it up she kept the top cutting and she gave me the bottom my new philodendron jose bono she also gave it to me in this l hole pot which she really didn't have to do but it's so perfect it's just ready to go i just plopped it into my plant room and it started growing already it unfurled this leaf let me show you closer it unfurled this leaf here I am fairly confident I'm not gonna kill this one because it is a little bit more mature and definitely established. Let's look at what the roots look like. I actually haven't done this yet. How do I, how do I? Yeah, it's definitely rooted. It's self-watering. I don't have to worry about it. I can just look at the water meter. I'm not like hugely into variegated plants, but for some reason the Jose Bono just does something to me like I, I think it's because first of all I really like long leaf philodendrons I also really like 
variegation that's not just like white that changes color. I really like the patterning of the Jose Bono so I, I just really like how it can have like the sectoral variegation like this but also like the speckling across the rest of the leaf blade and the way that they grow and they get the lobes and when the leaf comes in under bright light it can be like very white and creamy and then it kind of hardens off to this like green on green situation. I, I love this plant so much and I'm so grateful to have this one in my collection finally. One that I'm not gonna kill, I don't think. This is actually living outside of a greenhouse right now. I have it just like next to an exo in my plant room. It's really warm in there, but it's not very high humidity. And so far it seems fine. It's on a lazy pole already, which is good. Literally she gave it to me all set up, ready to go. I don't have to do a single thing to it. They not only gave me the gift of a wishlist plant, but they gave me the gift of time as well because I don't have to do anything to set this one up. So I'm just gonna like let it grow. I'll probably inoculate it with great white and then beyond that, I'm just gonna just enjoy this plant and what more could I ask for? So that's the first birthday plant that I got. If anyone is growing Jose Bono with like a really, really striking white creamy variegation that um, if you're able to get it to hold on for a little bit longer before it fades to green, let me know if it's just simply a light thing or if there's anything else like nutrition, humidity, or warmth that correlates with the white variegation staying a little bit longer, I'd love to know. Not that I like don't like this green on green, this green on green is freaking stunning, but I'm also curious to know like if it's simply just light levels and then higher light that'll give brighter white variegation, kind of like a Florida ghost gets more white under bright light, or if it's like something else as well. If you're growing a very white Jose Bono, does it stay that white in the winter time under the same amount of light? Or does the white darken a little bit quicker? Let me know. For some reason, I actually like this green on green a lot more than like the Domesticum variegated, which is like yellow, but it's like very similar when it's juvenile like this, like the very similar leaf shape and growth pattern. But for some reason, this green on green specifically is so so stunning to me. I think I mentioned this a few times, but I really want a green on green variegated Monstera, but with a lot of that lime green variegation. I think that they're just so stunning, so subtle, and just like so unassuming, but yet so beautiful. So that's my first birthday plant. Thank you guys so much. Okay, this next one is one that I did mention I wanted in the Hoya wishlist video, or it was maybe it was in my wishlist video. I don't remember which video it was. Maybe it was my wishlist video, but it was one of my Hoya wishlist plants. But anyway, this one is a gift from my boyfriend, but in collaboration with Jing. So my boyfriend bought this plant from Jing. Jing came and dropped it off. It just, I just happened to have a lot of donuts to give away one day. And I was like, hey Jing, do you want some donuts? She's like, yeah, I'll get some donuts. And she lives kind of like far from me, like 20 to 30 minute drive. So I was like, okay you want the donuts that bad. So she came in and it was actually to drop off this plant. So this is my brand spanking new Hoya Clemenciorum Thailand. I want to show it to you without the glare so you can see just how stunning it is. This is different from Hoya Clemenciorum that is like often seen these days. What I'm told by Jing is that this Thai Clemenciorum was kind of first on the scene for a while and then in COVID, I think, when like the Thai borders closed and then the like, Indonesian borders stayed open to export plants, the Indonesian Clemenciorum kind of took over the market as like the Clemenciorum, but this one was actually around before and I find it actually like so much prettier in a lot of ways because it's all dark. It has very similar veining to the Clemenciorum that I already have. I'll put in a little clip of my Clemenciorum that I currently have, which I also got from Jane, but this one looks quite a bit different and it's just, I think, so incredibly pretty and yet so incredibly ugly at the same time. And I've been wanting this Hoya for so long and I don't know if it's a quick grower or not. Um, I've seen this also on Amy's channel at Wolfgang's Mama. Um, hers is also really stunning, so I'm so so thrilled to have this finally in my collection. This is probably like my Hoya style summed up in one leaf. It's it's veiny, it's ugly, it's raggedy, it's dumpstery, it's freaking perlite. I just vacuumed the floors yesterday. It's dark, 
it's just everything that I want in a Hoya. So I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to have this in my collection. And I'm curious to see if this is easier to grow than the Indo Clemenciorum because actually mine is not doing so good lately. I don't know what it is. Maybe because it dropped, maybe because, I don't know, like it's kind of a finicky Hoya as far as I'm aware. So that one's kind of dying. But also in my last growth updates video with the Hoyas, a lot of people were talking about like fungicides and miticides that are absolutely necessary for Hoyas that kind of stall. Sometimes there would be these flat mites that attack new growth. So I'm gonna look into that and I'm gonna ask Jing what she knows and um, look into like possibly treating them for these like invisible Hoya mites. I'll definitely look into that because I don't want to lose my other Clemenciorum, but it is not looking so good these days. So I'm I'm just very excited to have this finally in my collection. And it has a new leaf coming out. Let me focus. This was already out when it was dropped off and like Jing was convinced that it was going to drop off and die. But so far, still holding on and still expanding. So I'm really, really excited. This was the Hoya that was the top of my wish list for Hoyas for a really long time so I finally have it checked off my list and I think I can cool off on the Hoyas for now I don't think I need any anytime soon I think I will just calm down and just enjoy my Hoyas maybe get some of them trellis while I'm at it I somehow got perlite stuck between my toes this next one was picked up um, at the Equigenera show it's not from Equigenera, but it was from a local vendor that was selling at the pop-up. So this is not my wishlist plant, kind of. It was, it's my boyfriend's wishlist plant, but by proxy, it was my wishlist plant as well. Because I've been looking for it for so long, I felt really invested in this plant. And actually, now that I own it, I really, really like this plant. So this is an Alocasia sandariana nobilis. I feel really lucky that I even found this in the first place because I've literally never seen it for sale in Canada. I saw a photo of this plant kind of like from a distance at the booth during the show. So I was like, we have to go. This plant is there and we went and it was there, got it for a good price. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have this one. So it looks a lot like an Amazonica, right? But it also has like that Jacqueline kind of leaf shape and as the plant matures um, this shape gets a lot more exaggerated kind of similar to what a Jacqueline might look like maybe not exactly the same kind of like pattern but very very similar in how the shape becomes a lot more pronounced the reason why my boyfriend wanted this so much is because it's so random he thinks that this looks like a plant from Rocco's Modern Life and to my knowledge in Rocco's Modern Life, they never really like focus on the plants. Like when I look it up, it's always kind of like in the background and I don't know why he would just look at this and be like, Rocco's Modern Life, I have to have this plant. But that's his reason for wanting it. My reason for wanting it is because it looks so incredibly cool. I'll throw in a photo of like my, my favorite specimens that I found on Instagram. Right now it's in a what looks like a very coir heavy soil mix. That's not what I love to grow allocations in. I think this is going to be way too um, quick drying for me. So my plan was to get this to kind of settle in in my plant room for a little bit and then I'm going to move it to pond. So by the next time you see this plant, it's going to be in pond. So right now it's like really, really tall. I have a feeling it might have been grown in more shade. So my plan is to get it under brighter light, really high warmth and see if I can get it to look a little bit more compact a little bit less just tall and gangly but yeah the more i look at this plant the more i freaking love it so it's not like a wishlist plant that i've wanted for a really long time but i've definitely been on the hunt for this plant because my boyfriend wanted it so much and this was actually like his top wishlist plant he was so happy when we got it i was actually not expecting him to be so thrilled when we actually finally got this plant but he was so 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 excited which made me even more excited for it so yeah my plan is to grow it and multiply it have lots of these little babies and yeah okay the last birthday plant i had is a wishlist plant that i've wanted for years now i think in my wishlist video i said oh maybe i'll get this plant this year but not actually really believing that I'd be getting it this year. So this is my brand spanking new philodendron UPI. You guys, 
First of all, there's a freaking disco ball on it. And that makes me so happy. This stupid little disco ball makes me so happy. So I opened this present um, on my birthday. I went to dinner with my boyfriend, Charmaine and Vince. And when I opened it, I was like, I was mad, first of all, that they got me this plant, but also like I immediately recognized this leaf because I was like, did you get this from Lauren? And they're like, yes. And Lauren remembered that I kept pointing this out as my favorite leaf when she had imported it, when we um, first did a video at Northwestern Tropicals. So it just like, it was like emotion after emotion after emotion that like they, first of all, they got this plant for me and then they got it from Lauren. And Lauren remembered this was my favorite leaf and they freaking put a disco ball on it and they covered it in stickers. Like it's just everything. I so 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 happy i can't even tell you how long i wanted this plant this is just exactly the kind of philodendron that i love it's long leafed it's a freaking weirdo it's to my knowledge fairly easy going my plan is to get it into pond because um i'm told that it hasn't been in this moss for very long so it wouldn't have rooted too much in the moss so my plan after i wrap filming today is to get this into pond i don't know if i necessarily need a pole for it I've seen a lot of people growing UPI without a pole and it's like sized up fine. It just needs to be a little bit contained because it can grow like really, really wide. So maybe the pole would help to kind of like keep the petioles a little bit closer together so it doesn't take up as much width in my greenhouse. But either way, I am absolutely thrilled. Thrilled is an understatement. I am so, so happy to have this finally in my collection. Even though it's like very available these days, but for the longest time it was quite unattainable like at one point I was ready to spend a thousand dollars on it and luckily I talked myself out of it because I would have gotten myself into bad financial trouble if I did that it was always compartmentalized in my brain as something that like I was not gonna have but like wouldn't it be nice if I had a UPI in my collection but I didn't really need it but yet I did really need it like in my heart I really wanted the plant but deep down I had told myself that it's like not a plant that you were ever gonna have, so just kind of like let it go, but now I have it, so yay! Yippee! And this is the other leaf on the plant. It's so tiny and yet so perfect. It's only the size of my hand and yet it has like that perfect UPI shape. So cute! Oh, I forgot. Every time Charmaine gives me a gift with a rock, she makes sure to give me the ugliest rock possible. I'm just imagining her trying to make like the ugliest cursive ever and covering it in stars. Like, what the fuck? <sighs> so the last, last wishes plant I got was at the Equigenera show. So this one I purchased. This is one of the plants that came from Florida, I believe. I've never seen this at their Equigenera shows and I think um, I recall seeing it on their list. When they were sending out the price list, they had like a list for Ecuador plants and then a list for Florida plants. So I very vaguely recall seeing plants like Spirit of Sancti and stuff like in a Florida section of the price list. So to be honest, since then, like I had completely wiped this from my memory. When I showed up, I totally forgot that plant would be there, but then when I had it in my hand, I was like, holy crap, I should, I have to get it. Like, I've been wanting it for so long. I've been wanting it for a couple of years, at least. So this is my new philodendron bicolor. All right, so I think it was like a year and a half or two years ago, Ecuador was selling bicolor that wasn't bicolor. So if anyone remembers, a couple of years ago, um, Equiflora was selling philodendron bicolor on their price list for like 20 bucks or something basically flooded the market except that it wasn't actually bicolor it was like a long leaf philodendron with reddish abaxials but it wasn't actually philodendron bicolor and it was actually like for the most part philodendron ruizii and they're really really big giant plants but it just wasn't bicolor and it wasn't the one so it kind of ruined bicolor for a lot of people because like they got these plants and it just wasn't quite like as pretty and as cool as a bicolor and then people thought that's what bicolor was so i had ordered a bicolor at the time without having seen photos i was just like trusting that it would be bicolor and it wasn't and i was like i've been like vaguely looking since then but 
I don't ever see it for sale in Canada, so I wasn't really expecting to ever find one. I would just enjoy it on James's YouTube, James Armstrong, and like if you guys watch James, you'll know that Bicolor is like his favorite philodendron of all time, and it's just so beautiful. So it has these like long darkish green leaves with a really, really striking red abaxial. Like this is a fully, fully hardened leaf and it just, the red stays on, which I freaking love. And if you're ever curious how to tell if it's a real bicolor, the bicolor would have two tone petioles. So it would be red and green. So there's red on the bottom that like extends into the back seal and then green on top. It also has this like freaking fat petiole that just like swells in the middle. It's so freaking cute. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that shape. Can you see? It's so plump and it just, they look like little sausages. I freaking, uh. I've been definitely wanting this plant. I never mentioned this, but I've been wanting this plant for a couple years now. And I don't talk about it because it wasn't really attainable, not because it's so crazy expensive, but I just, it just wasn't here in Canada. And then suddenly it was, and it was right in front of me. And also I was really lucky because I was working the first day of the pop-up, so I couldn't go there. And the second day, I think, um, yes, I was off that day. My boyfriend was working. He got off work right in time for us to go to the show together. And we got there in the last like two hours of the show. And at that point, they mark everything for 50% off. So I actually got this for a really, really good price. It was originally, I think, 325 Canadian, which with like the conversion and then the, the shipping and the fees and everything, it was like a pretty good price. And then it was 50% off, so I couldn't be happier with it. And so far it hasn't taken a dive. It didn't have a ton of roots. Actually it had a lot of root rot because the little moss pouch that they had shipped it in was like dripping wet, like it was heavy. So a lot of roots suffocated in transit. So I had one kind of long primary root to work with. I don't know if it's gonna stay, but so far it's looking just the same as the day that I picked it up. And I've been kind of checking on this emergent leaf every day and it, I don't know if it's my imagination, but I feel like it has come out of the sheath a little bit more. In my mind, it was also another plant that I was never gonna get because it just wasn't available or I'd be waiting like years and years to get it. I can't believe it was there. I wasn't even planning to get one and it happened to be 50% off. I shouldn't have been spending money on plants and I don't have space for many plants, but I just had to treat myself. My last wish list plant, I think I've already done five. One, two, three, four. Yes, this is number five. So happy to finally have this plant. So these next two are just random growth updates that I had to capture on camera in the state that they're in currently because they're not gonna look like this forever. And I just did two growth updates videos, so I'm not gonna do another one right now. So so this is my philodendron Nangaroo Tense. It definitely took a little bit of a beating since I showed in my video. I think it went without water like a week too long. I had an incredibly like stressful and savage work week, so Basically everything suffered in that week and I didn't get to my watering in time, but it's fine. It just took a little bit of crisping at the edges. So it's not looking its best right now, but I wanted to show you the new leaf that I put out. It's not the biggest one due to the lack of water and nutrients, but look at how freaking round it is. Are you joking? Is this the cutest leaf you've ever seen? I am just in awe of how incredibly adorable this plant is right now. I'm trying to show it to you without getting all that glare because it's so shiny right now. I think we're just gonna have to live with the glare. I just needed to show this right now because as you know, like an emergent leaf on an angry tense is quite pinky and it's already like turned quite green, but this color is not gonna stick around forever. And also like that gloss and the shape of it is like, I just needed to capture it in this moment when it's looking so freaking like they just want to pinch his cheeks it's so cute so that's the first one like not much else to say about it that i haven't already said before but i'm just grateful that it decided to put out such a cute leaf even though i've been severely neglecting this plant so that is random update number one so this one is an import update so this is the gloriosum that i imported through Equigenera when they did a pop-up at Banjula. so it was only a couple months ago that i imported this 
It was the only plant that I had ordered and I think I claimed this from their Instagram live sale. So anyway, I potted this up on camera. I'm just trying not to show the newest leaf. And I was saying how like, it's like another angry looking Gloriosum. It's like very menacing looking, like especially this leaf here. I just wanted a cute kind of like benign looking Gloriosum, but I keep getting these ones and growing ones that look really, really like aggressive. In other news, it's rooted really, really well into the pond. So we got roots kind of going all around and it's already ready for a repot because you can see the stem starts right at the edge here and it's already reached the end here. So I'm gonna have to get it into like one of the wide rectangular planters that I use. When this plant came in, the new caterpill was like broken. It was like, not in half, but like the tip of it, like probably like a centimeter or so was like chopped off. So I was expecting for the new growth to be really, really small, but look at the new leaf. It is so incredibly perfect. It's definitely bigger than the one before it and it's still really, really floppy. I've been neglecting my tent so much lately that I wasn't really like watching this one unfurl, but when it actually like fully opened and I saw this leaf, I was like, holy crap. And I feel like it doesn't look really big on camera, but it is like one of the biggest Gloriosum leaves I've ever grown. Just showing it next to my head here. Like the venation is so crazy bright on this one. Compared to this one, the veins are definitely thicker on the new leaf. The white in the veining definitely like fades down as the leaf hardens, but this thickness and like it looks so crazy bold. Oh my goodness. This is definitely one of the most, if not the most successful like first leaves on an import that I've ever had. It's freaking perfect. They look like two different personalities, right? This is mood, this is a mood but also this is a mood. This is like Tuesday afternoon after you've had like the 10th stupid email. And then this is Sunday morning. This actually looks super cool next to each other. So this is the newest leaf when I import it and there's the new leaf. But I'm also a little bit sad that I have another repot that I have to do. Like the list of repots keeps growing and growing and growing. Luckily with pond repots, it's so quick. You just take it out, bigger vessel, scoop, scoop, scoop water done so it shouldn't take me too long i just need to set some time aside to repot i'm actually thinking like in order to get on top of all the repots that i need to do and like try not to think too much about like having to film a repot like i'm thinking to just make a physical list of the plants that need repot and then like two or three days a week set aside an hour or two and just get those done and get those checked off and that's i think the only way i'm going to be able to get on top of all the plant tours I need to do. And of course, like if it's worth filming, I would film it. But for the most part, it's just kind of like upsizing the pot or getting them out of moss and whatever and rehabbing them. The more plants that I can get out of moss into either soil or pond, the better for me because of how busy I have been and how difficult, it, there's something in my eye, how difficult it has been to water plants that are in moss that have completely dried out. I don't have that much time to spend watering and when a plant is completely dried out in moss, it takes so much longer to hydrate it, especially if it's root bound, it just like, it's almost impossible. So I definitely want to start transitioning all the moss plants out of moss into one of my preferred substrates. And I'm just like, once I'm done with that, I'm pretty much, I'm going to not grow plants in moss anymore. That was a totally off topic and unrelated and useless tangent. Hux, do you like to be on camera? You look like you're dead inside. All right guys, Huxley is here, which means it's time for the outro. Let me know if you've been checking any plants off your wishlist this year, because honestly, like the prices and availability have been so amazing this year that I feel like everyone must be checking plants off. If you think back like two years ago and like getting the plants now currently that are available to us at the prices that we're getting them at, like two years ago, that would be unfathomable. Unfathomable. <laughs> unfathomable un unfat un yeah i know it would it would be hard to fathom anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed it please remember to give it a like and i know you're such a good boy i hope you have a great rest of your weekend and i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>